Dave, I've been wrestling with this, and I think the viewers need to come into this conversation as well, because Mike McCarthy, since he last won the Super Bowl, he hasn't made a whole bunch of noise as a head coach. He just, he just hasn't. He's won playoff games, I believe, against Jason Garrett, won playoff games against the likes of Todd Bowles, but he hasn't won playoff games against the Shanahans. He hasn't won playoff games against some of the greater head coaches in ball. I think... Jerry Jones is giving Mike McCarthy too much hiring and firing power, but you cover the Cowboys for literally 10 years. You know more about the Cowboys than anybody, including anyone watching this show. So is he getting too much power? No, I don't think so. If anything, I, I think we're seeing evidence of, I mean, and for the record, I think Mike McCarthy's done a pretty admirable job, like back-to-back -back trips to the playoffs for the first time in 13 years. Back to back, uh, for, well, back to back, twelve win seasons for the first time since the nineties. Yep. Road win in the playoffs for the first time since the nineties. So the Cowboys are going to be judged against their previous success, and rightfully so. But no, I, I don't think he's getting too much power. If anything, I think we're still seeing Jerry Jones's fingerprints on this team. Like Dan Quinn remains in Dallas because of Jerry Jones. I would love to know how many zeros are on that check that Dan Quinn is getting written to stay as the D.C. in Dallas. And, and well-deserved, of course. Deserves. But Jerry, only Jerry Jones could pull something like that off. On top of that, some of these staff changes we've seen are guys that have been with Mike McCarthy forever. Joe Philbin, Joey remembers Joe Philbin, he used to be the head coach of the Dolphins back before he was with Mike mm. McCarthy in Green Bay. Like, that's how long Joe Philbin and Mike McCarthy have been together. Same thing with his assistant head coach, Rob Davis. He's been in, he was in Green Bay with Mike going back to 2008, 2009. So these are some guys that Mike McCarthy has spent a long time with, I would assume has great relationships with, and they're being shown the door. Now, what I don't know is how much of that is Mike and how much of it is Jerry, but we're clearly, we're seeing things change that I don't necessarily know would be all on the head coach, especially Dan Quinn. And for that matter, that is the most important one. If the Cowboys can keep Dan Quinn in the building, the rest of that I'll take. And I think anybody that follows the Cowboys would agree. That's a win regardless of anything else that's happening. Joy, where do you stand? Too much power from McCarthy? I think Jerry Jones has too much power. There it is. It's not a normal conversation that we're having right now. No. Just want to point that out. Again, we have normalized this behavior to a point that we discuss this as if it is reasonable. And it is not reasonable. And it is also why the Cowboys continue to lose and why they will continue to underwhelm and underperform mm. because they keep flying in the face of logic, just burrowing away. One day it's going to work, and it never has, and it never will. What has Jerry Jones the same? Yeah. is the owner of the team. Why do I care about what he thinks about football decisions? We don't care what any other owner thinks about it. And anytime you have an owner that is this involved, it generally means you're not going to be a very good team because that's not what you do well. Great owner hires the best people, and lets them do their job. Sign some checks, gets involved when things get a little spicy. But other than that, you are the head coach. You should hire your staff. You should decide, decide how many carries Ezekiel Elliott gets. You should decide who's going to be the starting quarterback if someone else is playing better. I'm not going to jump on the air and talk about, I think we should have a quarterback competition in the middle of the season. <laughs> We are talking about something that is not normal, like it is normal. Yes. And this is why the Cowboys haven't won anything in how many years? 27. 27. So, Dang. yes, he should have all the power because he's the head coach. And any other head coach at a winning organization would have this power. Right? Just to go off of that, too, like, imagine the flip side of this, where Jerry Jones is coming out and saying all of this stuff for Mike McCarthy. Like, Jason Garrett got that rap for a long time of, like, he's just Jerry's puppet. Like, he's here because Jerry can get him to do whatever he wants. So, like, in this very weird scenario, I don't know that there's a way Mike McCarthy can win. Like, he's either getting too much power from his GM or he's a puppet, one or the other. It's all very weird and here's, unique to Dallas, like Joy just said. I guess here's what I hate. Shady, there's nothing I really hate more in sports than somebody being a scapegoat. Nobody talks about it at home. This is probably the least talked about thing in the sports world is scapegoats. What do I mean by that? Scapegoat is the coach who gets fired because the coach who should have gotten fired kept his job. The running back coach wasn't retained, but Tony Pollard was a Pro Bowl. Yeah. Cowboys haven't had a Pro Bowl running back since I think Zeke in maybe 2018 or 19, and Zeke's been on a constant decline. Right. The defensive line coach, former Cowboys player, yep. Leon Lett didn't get retained. And last I checked, that's the best part of the team. Marcus Ware balled. 
Micah Parsons bald. Number 56 bald. Dorrance Armstrong bald. Who's number 56? Dante Fowler? Dante Fowler, Dante yeah. Fowler got his numbers. Uh, I just know I watched him. I just know him by numbers. Uh, <laughs> Dorrance Armstrong bald. So I'm like, wait, the D-line coach didn't get retained? Shady, the linebacker coach didn't get retained? Leighton Van Der Esch played well. Yeah, he did. Played well. I think these guys are scapegoats for Mike McCarthy, but you think he's getting too much power? No. No. I, I, like, I like McCarthy. I think he did a good job. You know, um, I, I see his team getting better and better. Last year, they weren't disciplined at all. This year, they show a lot more discipline. And then I also think, like, I, I watched, I played in the era where Jason Garrett was getting all the power. Mm -hmm. Ten, what, ten seasons? Yep. He's had, like, three playoff appearances, right? And McCarthy, in the third year, already two. I think it gets better and better. Now, I do think that McCarthy should have more power to do something with the personnel. Like, move this player, get this player, get a different quarterback, mm -hmm. right? But I think the Cowboys on the right direction. I think he deserves the power he's getting. Dave, let me drop um, chaos, to be politically correct, I mean, into what, this conversation. That's what the Cowboys do best. I believe that coach-quarterback combinations win Super Bowls. This okay. is my fervent belief, right? Tom Brady, Bruce Arians. Tom Brady, Bill Belichick. Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid. Matthew Stafford, Sean McVay. Yeah, yeah. I believe coach-quarterback combinations, more than any other combination, is what really dictates the Super Bowl. Dak Prescott, Mike McCarthy, is not a Super Bowl-winning coach-quarterback conversation. You've done so very eloquently on social media and your Fox Sports writing allowed us to understand Dak isn't going anywhere. But if coach-quarterback combinations win Super Bowls, and right now think about it, Jalen Hurts, Sirianni, Joe Burrow, Zach Taylor, Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, and then you have the outlier, and the outlier which proves the rule, Brock Purdy, Kyle Shanahan. If coach-quarterback combinations win Super Bowls and Dak and McCarthy isn't a Super Bowl-winning combination, what's going to give? Well, that's a really interesting subplot here. And now that we know Dan Quinn's thing, it's the most interesting thing. We don't yet know what's going on with Kellen Moore. And I think a key difference there... Mike McCarthy was Aaron Rodgers' play caller for a lot of his Green Bay career. He hasn't been calling the plays in Dallas. Like, nope. Mike McCarthy is way more of a CEO, you know, just walk-around head coach than he was when he was in Green Bay. Kellen Moore calls the offense. And again, Mike McCarthy didn't want to speculate on Kellen Moore's future. He said his evaluation was ongoing. That is a very interesting place to be because it's simultaneously true that the Cowboys have been a top-five offense through Kellen's entire tenure. They've also been really disappointing and disjointed when they've gotten into the playoffs. Just, I mean, 12 points, 17 points the year before that. So there's some criticism there. And I wonder, like, is Kellen Moore coming back? Do the Cowboys need to tweak their offense? Because I would argue that at the very least they should tweak it. People have been wondering if Mike would want to take play calling duties over since he got here and it hasn't happened yet. I wonder if change is coming there in the next mm. few weeks or, or and if it does, what would it look like? Can I defend Mike McCarthy, though? Of course, yeah, do. sure. Please he won do. a Super Bowl. No, he's won a Super Bowl. So you're talking that. about combina like quarterback-coach combinations. Well, Mike McCarthy had a combination that won a Super Bowl. It was Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. Dak Prescott hasn't won a Super Bowl. Mike McCarthy has. And Mike McCarthy has won a Super Bowl more recently than Jerry Jones. So, and they're getting better every single year. Mm -hmm. I don't, like, want to go out too far on a ledge here, but Mike McCarthy has absolutely done a good enough job to not have a – scapegoat and, you, and part of the reason why these changes are being made and and people would say well maybe they're just covering up for mike mccarthy we don't know who makes the decisions here no so if you don't have a, a a clear delineation of responsibilities then you don't know who to blame so if it's jerry meddling in this and mike is in charge of this and kellen moore is calling the place okay who do we blame? Because everybody has a little slice of responsibility pie because it's dysfunctional and that's why they continue to lose. And I continue to be right because I have 27 years of evidence that this is continuing to lead to the exact same result. What is the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. It's not, it's not wrong. So Shady, do you like Kellen Moore? Because if, if, if it's not Mike McCarthy because he's gone to a Super Bowl, yeah. where do you stand? Like, He's gone to a Super oh, because he's won a Super Bowl. Where do you stand on Kellen Moore? Kellen Moore's the truth. He's the truth. I love him as a coordinator. It's the reason why he had opportunities to be a head coach. You don't just be average and get opportunities to get interviewed for a head coaching job. It doesn't work like that. That's why I'm, like, kind of surprised on what's going on in Dallas. 
are they trying to get rid of Kellen Moore, they, or is it trying to not sign him? What I'm is gonna, that? Mike McCarthy is very non-committal to a guy who's had a number one offense two out of the last three years. It has to be something. Do you think Kellen Moore is getting some of the blame that Dak should be getting, or what do you think's going on there? I think, and we saw this last year, by the way. They lost the Niners in the wild card round, and there was a month of drama about, and it was it was mainly about Mike McCarthy last year, about wh whether Jerry was committed to his future. I think there's frustration and evaluation, and that's what I was getting at is I think you can watch the tape back of that playoff loss and think, yes, Dak Prescott played poorly, but is our offense stale? Is our offense predictable? Shady, you don't have to agree with me, but, like, it's a, it's a valid <laughs> talking point. I personally... I would guess Kellen Moore has done enough that I I would be surprised to see him move on. I mean, again, I top go. five in offense, like the last four sure. years, speaks for itself. So the, some of the interceptions that, that, that Dak has, first of all, that play right there, don't throw that ball. If it's covered, throw it, throw it away. There's nothing wrong with that. Live for next down. What about all the other turnovers that we've seen with Dak Prescott? The one that Greenlaw dropped, I guess Kellen Moore gets blamed for that. Mm. When you had CeeDee Lamb wide open. Wide open. Or what about the picks? You throw on the outside leverage pass, you throw it inside. How do you blame Kellen Moore for that? I say it all the time, and, and, I, and I don't fucking want to pick on Dak, but I'm not. We got to stop giving him passes. It's either right or wrong. There's no gray area. There is gray area, like, No, because y'all trying to get, put it on a coordinator, where a coordinator that, that other teams want to be their head coach for a reason. Where Dak Prescott is giving these picks, come on. You can, like, the quarterback can play poorly, and the offensive game plan can be uninspired at the same time, right? The first pick he had, was that Kellen Moore or that's that? I'm not assigning blame for come picks. On, I'm saying, is... you know, maybe run fewer curl routes on, to they the try... sticks on third down. Like, that would be a starting point. One of their most successful uh, offensive plays is when they have CeeDee Lamb in the slot, mm -hmm. right? He's, he's most successful when he's in the slot. And then, two, I, I think they try to protect that. To be honest, if they bring another quarter in, in, in for the, the, the Cowboys, I want to see who that is because it's going to be so hard to work with Dak Prescott. We are, well, I we think are Kellen there. Moore simplifies the offense so much for Dak more than anybody else. Anybody else that's like a, um, a veteran quarterback. They run the ball all the time. They make the safe throws. Like, y'all got to stop this giving them a pass. It's I, ridiculous. It's the NFL. It's not college. It's not no high school. We, I don't know how we got here. Yeah, I, like, I will like, say... If the Cowboys move on from Kellen Moore, I can't wait to see who they hire. Subscribe here to get the latest from Speak and go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.